I was about 10 years old, my mom and dad took me to Cherokee, North Carolina, and we had the good fortune to meet and have dinner with Chief Obi Sanook. I fell in love with Cherokee, and I think you will too. I'm Mike, and during the next hour, we're going to take a look at Cherokee, North Carolina, show you some fun things to see and do while you're here. Hi, I'm Brittany. Now, we have a number of these visitor channels throughout the Mountain South. We try to have a little fun along the way and at the same time learn as much as we can about each area. So join us as we take a look at the Great Smoky Mountains and Cherokee, North Carolina, right after this. Redhead, out. You know what a lot of grown-ups are missing? Playtime. Taking a break from the everyday and hitting the playground for no other reason than to have fun. And when it's time to recharge, well, there's all kinds of goodies. Then it's back to fun. Yeah, grown-ups need more playtime. Harris Cherokee Casino Resort features your favorite games, including blackjack, roulette, craps, and the hottest slot machines, plus over 1,000 hotel rooms, the Essence Lounge, and restaurants ranging from casual to upscale, not to mention a 3,000-seat entertainment venue and the luxurious Mandara Spa. So go all in for fun at Harris Cherokee Casino Resort. Come out and play. I'm David Thompson, and I'm the camera guy. Uh, anybody got any ideas? on a piece we could do just specifically about the Great Smoky Mountains. How about trees? Good idea, David. Then we can do a second piece about bushes. Oh, I have an idea. What about the history of the Great Smoky Mountains? Don't you think people would enjoy hearing the story behind the park? I think you're right. I usually am. Or how about trees? There's a lot of interesting history to be found here in the Great Smoky Mountains. For example, these are considered to be the oldest mountains in the world. Around 250 million years ago, Africa and North America collided. This caused the rock to shift upward, creating the Appalachian Mountains. We know humans lived here 11,000 years ago, possibly longer. It seems a group of Iroquois Indians migrated south from the New England area and settled in various places around the southern Appalachian Mountains. And as time moved on, they became known as the Cherokee. With the abundance of wildlife and their development of agriculture, the Cherokee were, for the most part, living the good life. Then around 1540, the Europeans showed up. Well, there goes the neighborhood. By the late 18th century, European settlers began to show up here in large numbers. The two sides made an effort to get along, but when you put two totally different cultures together, you're going to have problems. Attempts were made to settle disagreements by drawing up treaties and establishing legal code. Well, none of this worked. Then in 1828, gold was discovered in North Georgia. Well, this changed everything. The European attitude was, let's don't let them get the gold. Two years later, President Andrew Jackson signed the Removal Act and the Cherokee Nation was relocated to what is now Oklahoma and their journey became known as the Trail of Tears. While the law stated all Cherokee must move west, we all know not everybody obeys the law. In this case, there was a handful of Cherokee that hid way back in the Smokies and somehow managed to survive. Then in 1889, the Kuala Indian Reservation was established. Now, what happened after that? is coming up right after this. Your grandfather brought your father. Your father brought you. Now you're a dad. See it again through your children's eyes. The wonder of Cherokee. Ayaoli. Immerse them in the 11,000-year-old Cherokee story with priceless ancient artifacts and life-sized figures. Watch their eyes grow wider with computer-generated imagery. Rediscover long-lost oohs and ahs with authentic artwork and dioramas. Show your little warriors the real thing. Come away feeling a little closer to our heritage and each other. The next stop on your learning journey takes you to the oldest and leading Native American cooperative in the country, the Kuala Arts and Crafts Mutual. 
Step into the permanent gallery and bear witness to the legendary craftsmanship in our collection of authentic Cherokee artifacts. Then stroll into the art gallery and enjoy 21st century Cherokee artwork. You just might find a perfect piece of handmade history and heritage to take home. Oginali. Once you are at the village, you will see it's more than just a place. It's also a time. 1760. As you step into the Okanalefti Indian village, you're transported back to witness the challenges of Cherokee life at a time of rapid cultural change. Okana Lefty showcases a living culture as they use ancient techniques to hull canoes, make pottery and masks, weave baskets and beadwork, and participate in their daily activities. In season, round out your Cherokee experience by taking in an outdoor drama that the Wall Street Journal called splendidly authentic, Unto These Hills. It's one of the only dramas in the world where the story is told by the descendants of those that the story is about. The drama traces the Cherokee people through the zenith of their power, through the heartbreak of the Trail of Tears, finally ending where the Cherokee people continue to rewrite their place in the world. In the Cherokee culture, there's no word for goodbye. Instead, they say, we will meet again. So whether you're planning your first trip or it's become a family tradition, you are always welcome to share the wonder that is Cherokee. You know, I'm pretty sure that I'm 1 16th Cherokee Indian. With the last name Abernathy? No, I, I think you're Scottish. You got something against Scottish Indians? late 1700s and on into the 1800s, quite a few pioneers had moved into the Smokies. Because they had to have houses, furniture, fences, barns, and fuel, logging played an important role. If they were going to have anything at all outside of a garden, it had to come from a tree. Think about it. You live in a forest, what do you got? Trees. By the mid-1800s, folks started longing for a profit, but it didn't really grow into a big business because getting the timber out of these mountains was quite a chore. I mean, honey, one mule can only drag so many logs. By the turn of the century, this logs for money idea began to change. The demand for lumber in the east was growing like wildfire, and someone was smart enough to say, hey, let's run a railroad back into these mountains. That, of course, made getting a large number of logs out of the mountains much easier. While the Smoky Mountains were a gold mine for timber, it didn't take long for the logging companies to strip these mountains bare. The only sections of forest that were overlooked were the ones that were just too hard to get to. We now call these old growth forests. This is an area where some trees are so big it takes four or five people to reach around one. Now that's a big tree. So. The Smokies are bare, there's no work here, people are leaving to find employment elsewhere, and this breathtakingly beautiful portion of the eastern United States lies in limbo. Then, in 1904, a librarian named Horace Kephart from St. Louis came to the Smokies and was so moved by the fact that all the timber was being stripped from these mountains, he decided to make a difference. He started promoting the idea of the Smokies becoming a national park. In the 1920s, some prominent people in Knoxville picked up on the idea and began raising money to purchase the land. Donations came in from everywhere, including a hefty $5 million from John D. Rockefeller. The money was finally raised to purchase the 515,000 acres that make up the park, and in 1934, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, in a dedication, announced that this area is now the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. And now that we've learned our history lesson, let's go have some fun. 